we're gonna start this video with a legend. A legend in which this man takes part. This man is Cole Bells. He's a very important mathematician, so I recommend you to read about him. We will probably be talking about him in all the courses. Uh, now, this uh, legend starts when Gauss was very young. Him and his classmates were being very noisy, and so his teacher found a way to keep him and his classmates occupied. She told them to find the result of the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 100. So she wanted them to solve 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the numbers until 100. So when she told them to do this, everyone started working and Gauss got the answer very fast. He very quickly was able to say that this was 5050. And the teacher was impressed by his speed, so she told him to, to explain it to his partners, and he did. So what he did was, well, instead of thinking about this sum only one time, he thought he could sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 in this order, and also 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus so on plus 1. And instead of adding these numbers by rows, he decided to do it. So that's a very awful line. He decided to do it by columns. So the first column would, would be 1 plus 100 is 101. And the second column is 2 plus 90, 99 is 101. And so on, all these columns would add up to 101. And how many times do we have 101? Well, we have one time for a column. So we have one, 100 columns. This is 100 times 100. And one. Now this number, 100 times 101, is actually two times the sum he wanted to solve. You see, sum 1 to 100 here and here. So this is two times 1 plus 2 plus 100. So to get the sum he actually wanted, what he had to do was 100 times 101 divided by 2. This would be 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 100. And we will change this notation. We're gonna use the sum symbol from n equals 1 to 100, the sum of n. Now, why am I ch changing notations now? Because now is when something very important that Gauss discovered comes to play, and it's that this uh, is valid for any number. So, in general, I will have that the sum from i equals 1 to n, the sum of i, is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. And this is what we're gonna try and prove in this video. This sort of equalities that are valid for every n natural number. To do this, let's start uh, with a definition. So, we're gonna have as h a subset of the real numbers. And we said that h is an inductive set if 1 belongs to h, and for every element in h, then the element plus 1 is also an element of h. So a few examples, well, are the natural numbers, because the natural numbers 1, 2, 3, they, they will verify this. 1 is a natural number, and for example, 5 belongs to the set of the natural numbers, and 5 plus 1 equals 6. Also, another 
possible set could be the natural numbers with a zero, because zero belongs to this set, one does two and zero plus one uh, also is in this set. Uh, the set of the integers, the rationals, the real numbers. These are all sets that we call inductive, so I'm gonna call it like this, inductive set. And now let's think about a few examples of sets that are not inductive. So if I take the natural numbers and I add one half to that set, well, for this case, what I would have is that one half belongs to n union one half, but one half plus one does not belong to that set, so it's not verifying this second property. Um, another set could be the integers except the zero, and this is because uh, minus 1 belongs to the integers except 0, but minus 1 plus 1, which equals 0, does not belong there. So again, I'm not having this second property. So these sets um, are not inductive sets. So with this, we can easily realize that n, the set of the natural numbers, the set of the natural numbers is the smallest inductive set. Because, well, if 1 belongs to n, and there are no extra elements, I'm not adding 1 half and all the plus 1s I need, uh, so this is actually a proof that you can do as an exercise, but it's not, not hard to actually believe it. And in what way do I mean smallest? Well, it means that if I have another set, let's say, well, if H is an inductive set, then the natural numbers are included in H. And check that, well, here I have the naturals, but naturals with a zero, this is an inclusion. Naturals are also included in the set of the integers, also the set of the rationals and the real, so you can actually believe me when I tell you this. And what we want to do is we're gonna have a theorem that, and that will prove all this things I'm saying, but in general, I'm gonna have a, an expression, and or let's say I, if H is a set, uh, let's say it's, it's an inductive set, and well, this tells us what I said over there, that the naturals are included, but if I find if I can say or prove that H is included in the natural numbers, well, in this one we have it because it's an inductive set. And if I'm able to prove this, then I have the double inclusion I, I talked about in other videos. So what we will have is H equals the natural numbers. So. What we'll be using this for is, let's say we have P of N is an assertion uh, about all the natural numbers, so all N in the natural numbers. So I have this, this is just a, a sentence, um, 
it can be something like n is greater than or equal to 1. Well, that is true for all natural numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with more complicated things than, than the one that I just mentioned. Um, so we're going to have something like this, a p of n, that's an assertion. And I'm going to have a co uh, define the set h, this two points with the equal sign means defined. I define h as all the n natural numbers that verify that p of n is true. So h collects elements, natural numbers, that verify that p of n is true. Then h is a subset of n. So what we will want to do is, if I can prove, if I can prove that h is an inductive set, then this would give me that the natural numbers are included in h, and so what I would have is that h equals natural numbers. What does this mean? It means that p of n is true for all natural numbers. So it's actually a very strong thing what we're doing here. So let's let's make a, a theorem about it. And the theorem is called the induction principle. So as I said before, uh, we have p of n. It's um it's an assertion about the natural numbers. If p of n verifies these two things, this is called the taste case, p of 1 is true, and the inductive case, if p of n is true, then p of n plus 1 is true, then what we have is p of n is true for all natural numbers. Now check this, these two things, this and this, are what defined h is an inductive set. So what we're actually doing here is define h as we did before, and here if h verifies these two things, then h would be an inductive set. And, and then this piece of n would be true for all natural numbers. So let's start with an example. Um, what better example than the one Gauss put? So, I'm gonna try and prove this. I'm gonna put it in green in the center. So, the sum of all from i equals 1 to n. And the, the sum of all natural numbers up to a number n equals that number n times the number that follows it divided by 2. This is what we want to prove, and we're going to use the induction principle. So, how do we do this? Well, let's call this p of n. This is an assertion about the natural numbers, and I want to verify if it's true. So, using the theorem I just, uh, I just wrote, we have two cases. The first one is the base case. What we want to do is prove p of 1. Well, what is p of 1? Let's replace n with a 1. This is the sum of all the natural numbers up to 1. This is just 1. And on this side, what we have is, instead of writing n, I'm writing 1. 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2, this equals 1 times 2, so 2 divided by 2, which equals 1. Okay, so these two things, they're equal. So the base case, we were able to prove p of 1, this is true. Okay, so great, we're halfway through. Now, it's time for us to prove 
the inductive step. I want to go back to the theorem so I can show you. So, what does the inductive case or step says? It says if p of n is true, so this is a hypothesis, and then p of n plus 1 is true, so this is a hypothesis, and I'm gonna call it inductive. Inductive hypothesis. We know p of n is true, then we prove p of n plus 1 is true. In this case, we would say this for n is valid. Now let's prove it for n plus 1. Okay? So in the inductive step, we go something like this. Uh, given n a natural number we know that p of n is true that means that the sum equals n n plus 1 over 2 this is true we don't have to prove this we know that this is true and what do we want to prove? Well, we want to prove this same thing, but instead of n, we want to write it for n plus 1. We want to prove that the sum up to n plus 1 equals and again, instead of writing n, I'm writing n plus 1. So this would be n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2 divided by 2. This is something I don't know. I'm not saying this is true. Okay, I'm saying this is what I want to prove. But it's always very important in the when we use the induction that we write where we're gonna get because you will see that some examples can get really complicated so we want to prove this well what better way to prove it than start just writing some some things till we get what we want let's start from this side the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of i well let's write the definition of this this weird symbol I presented to you today. This is 1 plus 2 plus all these numbers plus n plus n plus 1. Hmm. When you look at this you say, wait, there's something familiar about this. Now 1 plus 2 plus 3 ta 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 plus n, well this is something I know. This is sum to n of i. And wait, I saw this somewhere. Yes, I just said that. And this equals this. This is true. Oh, well, instead of writing all this, then you can just write n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So let's, let's do this. Instead of writing this sum, I'm going to write n times n plus 1 divided by 2 and then yes I have to add this other thing so this is plus n plus 1 okay so what this gives us is uh, I'm going to multiply this by 2 to, to, have, to get the common denominator I have n, n plus 1, plus 2, n plus 1, divided by 2. And now what I find here is I have n plus 1, and I have n plus 1. 
and I can just take n plus 1 as a common factor and what do I have outside? I have n and I have the 2 so n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 2 and that's exactly what I wanted to prove so I started here all I used was a definition and something very, very important and something that if you don't do, then it's wrong. Now, here, I use my inductive hypothesis and this is very important that we always use it because that's what the induction principle says. It says, if you have the induction hypothesis, and through it, you can get to what you wanted to prove, then your proof is correct. Okay, let's... This, is, this was a very simple example, it's just definition, hypothesis, and some basic operations. Let's try and do a more tricky example. So, again, I'm going to write here in the middle what I want to prove, I want to prove that 2n factorial, I will write the definition of the factorial in case someone doesn't know it, divided by n factorial squared, and this is smaller or equal to n plus 1 factorial. And I want to prove this for every natural number. Okay, the first thing we want to pay attention to is this. We want to prove something for all natural numbers, and then induction. That's something you will get used to, but most of the times when we want to prove uh, now and in very advanced math, uh, when we want to prove something for natural numbers, you will probably have to use induction. Not always, but most of the times. Now I'm going to write the definition of the factorial. So, single factorial is defined as 1. 1 factorial is defined as 1. And n factorial equals n times n minus 1 factorial. This is the definition. Now let's think of this in a in an example. So six factorial, for example, would be six. So n factorial is n times five factorial. So this is six times five factorial is five times four factorial, and so on. We get six times five times four, three. Two times one, and this is a, a very big number, uh, but this is the definition, and we're gonna be using it for this example. Okay, we're gonna prove this, and we're gonna do it with induction. So the first thing we have to use is the base gate. So I want to prove it for n equals 1, or p of 1 is the same. Um, so 2 times n is 2 times 1 factorial divided by n factorial squared. 2 times 1 is 2 factorial, 1 factorial is 1 squared, 2 factorial is 2 times 1 divided by 1, and this is 2. And on the other side I had a less or equal to, and the other side was n plus 1. Uh, so, instead of writing n, it's 1 plus 1 factorial. This is 1 plus 1 is 2 factorial, 2 times 1, 2. Well, in this case, we have the equality, but 
in particular, two is smaller or equal to two. And now we want to prove it for n plus one. Okay, so how do we start the inductive step? Well, we write our hypothesis. So we know that uh, it's valid p of n that p of n is valid okay we know p of n is valid and what did p of n say it said 2n factorial divided by n factorial squared is smaller or equal to n plus 1 squared a uh, factorial sorry we know this is true and this is my inductive hypothesis and what we want to do is we want to prove it for n plus 1 and what would this be for n plus 1? let's write it so we know what we want to get uh, instead of writing n, I'm gonna write n plus 1 this is 2 times n plus 1 factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial squared is smaller or equal to n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2 factorial and this is what we want to prove so again let's start from this side we have 2 n plus 1 factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial squared let's uh, do the distribution here the distributive and the uh, up here so this is 2n plus 2 factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial squared and let's now this is plus 2 so if you remember the definition of factorial this can be written as 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial divided by and here I have n plus 1 factorial squared so this is the n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 uh, times n factorial all this squared okay uh, again, I, the only thing I used was some distributives and the definition of the factorial. Now this equals, uh, I'm gonna leave this one as it is, I have 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. And I have the product of two numbers squared, so this this power can be distributed, so it's n plus 1 squared times n factorial squared. Hmm. Okay, let's go back and look at our hypothesis. Our hypothesis said 2 times n factorial divided by n factorial squared is smaller or equal to n plus 1 factorial. We have to use this at some point, so we always have to keep in this one in mind, so we can use it. And now, can we find this in here? Well, I can, and it's over here. It's in this. Here, I can use my inductive hypothesis. So. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to write all this, 
these are the three three terms as they are this is 2n plus 2 uh, 2n plus 1 n plus 1 squared this is what I have here now this part is smaller or equal to n plus 1 factorial so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this smaller or equal to all these times and I'm gonna write it in green n plus 1 factorial so here I'm using my inductive hypothesis okay so now we have all this and I don't see a way now to go from this to this way, thing we want to prove. We want to prove that all this thing is smaller or equal to n plus 2 factorial. But we still have this monster here. But let's remember the definition of factorial. Now, n plus 2 factorial equals n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial. We already have the n plus 1 factorial here. So what we want to prove is that all this is smaller or equal to n plus 2. Okay, I'm gonna write this now. So, it is sufficient if we prove, if we prove that 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 squared, this is smaller or equal uh, to n plus 2. Let's rewrite this first expression. So what we can do here is take common factor 2. So 2 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 squared. We can actually cancel this, uh, this one out and this gives us 2 times 2n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and we want to see if this is smaller or equal to n plus 2 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get a true statement uh, joined by ifs and all the ifs and so if that final statement is true then I could uh, conclude that this one is true. Now, this is true if and only if I'm multiplying times n plus 1, so uh, 2, 2n two plus 1 is smaller or equal to n plus 2 times n plus 1. Um, I'm gonna go to the left here. This is true, even only if I, I will do the distributives and I get 2 times 2n two, two is 4n plus 2, smaller or equal to n squared, and I have 2n and 1n, so that's plus 3n plus 2. And this is true, even only if I can... I can cancel these ones and these three with go with some of these and what I would get is n smaller equal n squared. Now let's think of this for a minute. N belong to the natural numbers. So n is different than zero. So what I can do here is I can just divide 
by zero and get uh, divide by not divide by zero divide by n and get one smaller or equal to n and as I said n was a natural number so this statement this is correct so I can then go back through all my arrows and conclude this is correct if you don't believe this then you could prove it actually that's a good exercise cool. prove it how induction so we have this what was this for let's go back now I have all this smaller or equal n plus 2 okay I'm gonna rewrite all this so I started I started with an expression like this it was 2 n plus 1 factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial squared I use my my inductive hypothesis so I, I used my inductive hypothesis to say that this was smaller or equal to uh, 2 times 2n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 multiplied by n plus 1 factorial and now I proved that this was smaller or equal to n plus 2 so this is smaller or equal n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial and this is this equals this equals n plus 2 factorial and this is exactly what I wanted to prove we can see that it's uh, what I have here I uh, don't I have it uh, it was a long exercise here I was able to prove n plus 1 so again going back um, I started with the base case then I use my inductive my my inductive hypothesis and I proved my inductive step so I did first I did this then I used my inductive hypothesis, hypothesis to prove my inductive space uh, step and so we can conclude that 2n factorial divided by n factorial squared is smaller or equal to n plus 1 factorial in the this was a very complicated example so i wanted to start with something difficult and in the next videos we'll go on with uh, some easier examples